Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Make It. And as you can tell, this week is going to be just a little bit different because this week I'm actually traveling. But I have something that I want to show you that I got from a Kickstarter. I think it was a Kickstarter campaign that I have mentioned in the past. And I also want to go back. I've had a lot of questions about the ADSB episode uh, about uh, two weeks ago. And I want to cover some things with that and kind of show you what is possible with it with, from the area that I'm in when I have it outside in my shed. So, uh, but first of all, uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and telling your friends. I'm just amazed every week at how much this show grows uh, and the amount of email and, and comments that we get is just awesome and um, I would love it. Um, I mean, our goal here is to, to help you to learn and to teach and to share what we have fun doing. And uh, I really appreciate all the great comments that we get from everybody. All right, so this is going to be a fairly quick week because, like I said, I'm traveling. I have all the nice lights. I'm in a hotel room, and it just isn't the best environment uh, to do a show in. But what I do want to do is to go over this micro thing called MicroPython, and it was a Kickstarter project, and it's a tiny little board that runs Python 3, I think. Python 3. And uh, it's really easy. Basically, you plug it into your computer, and it shows up as a hard drive, and you edit the files um, Right on, right on, on the device itself. There's no um, IDE required. There's no pushing. Basically, you edit it live on this little disk. It's on my Mac. It's called No Name, which is pretty common for a USB drive. Edit the main.py file, save it, restart it, and it just runs. So very quick, very easy. No software to install. It just works. And uh, I've been pretty impressed with it so far. Um, I'm still learning a little bit about it, but from knowing the Python language, it's actually very, very quick. And they got some nice uh, libraries also that uh, are included. So it makes it real nice and easy to get some certain things done. And I haven't tried them all out yet, uh, but I'm just very impressed with this little board. Plus it also has an accelerometer on it, and I'll actually show that in part of the show today of some tricks you can do with the accelerometer, uh, with the lights that are on the board, just to, so you can see which way you're moving and things like that. Before we go too far here, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the uh, the board. So this is it, and it's a MicroPython or uh, yeah, MicroPython, and it's MicroPython.org if you want to go look at it on the website. See, it's a very tiny. Um, I see. I don't know the exact number of I/O ports. Let me see on the back here if it says. Looks like twelve. Twelve I/O ports. Some of them are. Um, you know, they're GPIO, so they're general purpose. Some of them have um, controls for uh, PWM. In fact, there's also an example on the website about using a servo. Uh, very simple. I mean, a couple of lines in your servo is working. It's very, it's very simple uh, to do in, in Python. But this is the board. And whenever you uh, plug it in, let's go over here. I'm going to show you how it looks on my Mac. Right here you see where it says no name. That's the drive. And if I open it up, you see you have boot, and then you have main.py, a readme, and the PYB CDC uh, inf file. And if ever you mess it up, you can basically hit, uh, there's a sequence you can do, and it'll recreate this drive exactly as it is. Um, we're going to mess with the main.py file right here today. All right, so let me kind of get things set up here real quick and you can hear a lot of clicking on the on the keyboard today uh, okay so this is our edit window let me get this little black thing out of the way down here it's gonna be in your way okay so I have opened up the file and you see right here it's volumes you know on the Mac it's no name and then main.py and you see it comes up completely blank and I'm going to paste in some code here that I, I mean, all the most of this code today I've done uh, separately just so it was a little quicker to go through so um, that's the code, and basically all this is going to do is I've defined that the LED variable is equal to the Python board um, LED library number two, and I'm going to basically loop forever, and I'm going to toggle the LED. So instead of knowing if it's on or off to toggle it, it just has a toggle function, nice and clean doing way, way doing that. Then I'm going to wait uh, for one minute, one second. So let me go ahead, I'm going to save this just like this and then I'm going I have to unmount the drive uh, in the Mac otherwise it will complain so let me do this oops the wrong one and let's go down here to no name I'm going to uh, eject the drive I think I'm going to eject the drive 
There we go. And then I'm going to come over to the board. And on the board, I'm going to go over to this camera. There is a reset. Let me see, reset. And then there's a user. So this is the user button right here. This is the reset button. So I'm going to hit reset. The other thing you're going to just notice is there's LEDs on here, and they're very tiny LEDs. And we'll see that more as we go, go forward. So I'm going to hit reset. And then there we go, our one second on. Is some lights on here. And you can see that the green one is blinking. That's our program that we just wrote. One second on, one second off. I can't figure what I'm going to go to. There we go. So you see there, the, the green one's blinking. All right, so that's a very simple uh, one. Let's go out here and we're going to change the code uh, slightly. So let's come back over here to the computer and if I can get it over here. Okay, so we're at the computer, and we're going to come back, and since we rebooted it, no name showed up again, so we're going to open up no name just like this, and we're going to edit the main.py, and I've been using a text wrangler. So there's our program, and this time we're going to do a little bit of an array example. So we're going to, first of all, define our LEDs. Let me go in here and grab my code out of the notebook. Okay, there's this. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of all this right here and define our LEDs. Oops, I didn't get all the code. All right, I'm going to grab the rest of the code. There we go. So all we're doing here is we're defining an array of LEDs, and there's four LEDs on the board. Uh, actually, there's five LEDs on the board, and um, I'm creating an array, and basically we're assigning the ID of LED for the number in the range of one through five. So uh, we're basically creating an, ar an array here of objects that point to LEDs one through five. Uh, no, there's, there's only four, I'm sorry, there's only four here, four LEDs, one, one to five. N equals zero is we're starting our, our loop, and then we're going to do this forever again. So what we're going to do is um, add one to N to every loop, and then we're going to um, do a remainder operation and a four. So we should go constantly be going. All well, you know, the, the end number is always going up. It's um, always divisible by some point of four with a remainder. So it's going to go basically one through four or zero through three. So it'll end up being with a remainder. So then here we're going to just toggle the LEDs and we're going to only going to wait 50 milliseconds. So this is going to be a very fast moving thing. So let's go ahead and we're going to save real quick. All right, there it's saved and it takes a lot to save. So just got to make sure you watch the LED on it. I'm going to get out of this because I'm getting ready to eject this. So we're going to eject. All right, now we're going to go back over and we're going to look at the board before I reboot it. So now I'm going to take the board and I'm going to hit reset just like this. The, the disco effect and all the LEDs that are, are going across. So, and a lot of the code that I'm actually demonstrating here is actually can be found on their website as well. I've modified some of it a little bit just to do different things, but so. If we go back over to the computer, and we're going to go back into no name again, just like this. And go into text wrangler. So there's our code. Again, we just defined an array of the four LEDs, and we're going to loop forever. So while this is running, ends constantly uh, increasing, 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 and we're, we're dividing it by four, and whatever the remainder is, is the LED that we want to do and we wait for 50 milliseconds. So you see that uh, disco or walking effect as some people call it. All right, so let's see. Um, let's go and do something a little different here. Go get the, the code. 
So it's a very powerful board. And actually, I'm going to, um, there's a switch on it as well. And I'm going to walk through that real quick just to show you how simple a switch is as well. And then maybe we can even do um, a little callback here. Um, let's do this. So I'm just going to change the code that I have on the screen. That will actually make it easier. Uh, I'm actually just going to make uh, LED equal to LED1. Get rid of this range. Don't need to do the range. So this is all coding on the fly. And then I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to say switch. And again, it's PYB, which is the, the Python board. And then this is another library that we have here. And there only is one switch, so you don't really have much of a choice as far as numbers go there. Let me get rid of... I don't need this. And basically, I'm going to do... Make sure I got the switch correct. I think I do. Um, and then I can show you a little thing about interrupts as well. All right, we're just going to do it this way. We're going to make it really simple. I'm not even going to put a condition statement on it. We're going to do, um, no, I'm sorry, I already defined it. LED. All right, so actually I was not going to use a condition statement, but I'm going to have to because there is no common function. So we're just going to do this. If switch, I think I can do it this way. If switch. LED on. Else. LED off. Okay, so here is the code that we just did. And it's really simple. Just to find LED. And it's time doing LED3, which I believe is the yellow LED. And I define a switch object. And I'm going to loop through this forever, basically, and checking the state of the switch. And if the switch is pressed, I'm going to turn the LED on. And if it's not, I'm going to turn the LED off. So I've already saved this and uploaded it. <clears throat> so let's go look at it. And the problem with these micro boards is they're micro. <laughs> so here's the board. And this button right, it's right there. You can barely see it is the user button and when I press the user button you see the yellow light comes on. I see it doesn't look yellow to you probably. It looks like it's green I think. But it's yellow. <clears throat> and uh, that's what that program does. It's all it's going to do. So now I really only want to go through one other thing. That's the accelerometer. I'm actually going to use the sample uh, of the accelerometer code that came from them because it's really quick to put in there. I don't don't need to go through all the, the details of it. Uh, but there is an accelerometer, and let me get over here to it. There's actually a very great tutorial also on the website uh, as well. So I want the long one. So I'm going to just go copy and paste it from their website because it's a great example of how the accelerometer actually works. And if I could copy it, okay. Alright, so let's come back over to the computer. Sorry about all the delaying here. It's really hard when you don't have a controller in front of you. <laughs> we're going to take this code and we're going to replace it with their code off the, or off the website. And just like that, and we're going to save it. So it's saving right now. And then let's we'll walk through real quick while it's, okay, it's done saving. But basically, we're defining um, an array, or they call them tuples of lights, of two different LEDs in pairs. So here's the X and the Y. And we're setting our sensitivity to three because if you just did it on one, just a tiny bit of movement would make it go nuts. So we want a little bit of control over it. So we're going to do, uh, set the sensitivity. 
And basically what we're looking for here is the accelerometer returns an X and a Y value as far as how far it's moved since the last check. So if it's greater than the, we are going to assume we're moving, I think that's clockwise or around, it would be somewhat clockwise. And this is the opposite direction. And then if it's not moving at all, we're going to turn off the LEDs. And it would be sitting with the, the Y axis as well. And there's also a Z axis, which we didn't even include in here. Uh, so let's go ahead. This is saved. And now let's hop back over to the unit itself. And I'm going to hit reset, which is right here. And then we're going to watch what it does. All right, so if I turn it this way, you see it's blue. If I turn it this way, and I don't know how, how else is going to translate in this camera because this is not like a camera in the studio. So this way is yellow. This this way is green. So this way is green. This way is yellow. This way is red. And I'm also turning it a little bit the other way, so it's showing up green. This way is blue. So you can see it's it knows what direction it's going off the accelerometer. So it's very cool that the accelerometer is built into this board. Um, I can see a lot of uses for this for like uh, model type things or any kind of movement. There is no GPS built into it, but um, otherwise it's uh, pretty cool that the accelerometer is built into it so you can see any change in directions. So that's the MicroPython. Now, last I checked, it still was not completely delivered out of Kickstarter yet. So um, they aren't, you can't like buy them uh, yet, but it should be available very soon. Uh, there's the thing on the website you can, the last time I looked at least, that you can put it, get in line basically to get one. Um, I think there's great potential for something this small, running simple Python scripts, uh, no compiling, no um, IDE required. I mean, it's really, it's really, really a great thing. So um, the other thing I wanted to cover, since I have it kind of with me, at least I think I have it with me. Let me just make sure, let me get out of all the windows here. Um, the one of the, the uh, apparently the most popular episode as far as questions go is the ADSB airplane tracking thing. And I've gotten a lot of questions like, how well does it really work? Um, I know we sell those um, on the website now, the, uh, the little um, RF boxes. But what I wanted to do is I kind of wanted to show you, let me see if I can do this quickly. Um, I kind of wanted to show you what we what I see from where I live, which is you know in uh, somewhat western Maryland. Let's see if I can get this up. I need to change my shot a little bit. I think this will be a, a good enough example. So let me go back over to the computer. I just remember to keep it over here. All right, so this is a map of what I see. I'm located, uh, let's see, Maryland, somewhere in this area right here. Cause I'm like a mile or two from the state line of Virginia and then another mile from West Virginia. So I'm like right there where all three kind of meet the tri-state. Um, and this is an antenna, the antenna that I showed you how to build on an episode back. This is a 12 segment ADSB antenna. And you can see I'm seeing the whole way down. Here's North Carolina, right? Here's the North Carolina border. So I'm seeing a plane the whole way into North Carolina. Um, and I'm seeing things, you know, out past the Pennsylvania line in West Virginia uh, and well up into Pennsylvania. My easternly uh, view is not as much because I have a hill um, in a house that's on the, to the eastern side of me. So my view to the sky is... Uh, but, uh, I'm actually trying to get, uh, I've already ordered, it hasn't been delivered yet, uh, five segments of five foot antenna mast. So I'm going to stick it up another 25 feet to see how much that helps because that should be pretty much at the top of the hill, um, I think. And I want to see how much farther east I can go. You can see right here, I saw this one that was over in Delaware. Uh, but it seems to be when the planes are like, when they're high, it's 33,000 feet right here. I can see farther, but the ones that are coming into the Baltimore or Washington International Airport, I tend to lose because they're getting lower, where I can see most of the planes that are coming in to um, IAD, which is Dulles International, and I can see planes heading down the Potomac um, to head into National Airport as well. Um, but I don't, when they get down into the, the river area, I start to lose them because they're, they're a little bit lower, and that's the easterly of me. 
Uh, but I can obviously have a good view south. I have a decent view west and a decent view north. So I, my east in this area up in here is where I really don't have a lot of view. But that's just one of them. Let me bring up another one. Did it change? Yeah, okay. So this is another time that uh, you can see uh, I'm down in North Carolina. Actually, right here again is a little different view. A different. It's moved a little differently. But you can see I have quite a few planes in there as well. And it's interesting to remember that only about 17% of the U.S. planes have ADS-B. They ought to all have them by 2020. Uh, so that's something interesting to remember. Um, oh, this is was just a funny one. I was watching this little plane out of Dulles. Right here's Dulles. And it was just squiggly all over the place. I thought that was funny. You can see this plane here is turning in. It's 3,900 feet turning in to land at Dulles. So I have a good view of the Dulles, you know, approach and everything. Let me see what other ones do I have. That's similar to the other one. I just thought it was funny, that little guy. So here's a different different time. And um, you can see this is probably towards the evening because it seems like in the evening a lot of planes are heading this direction or this direction. In fact, there's a certain time of night when I see a ton of Federal Express and UPS planes. Uh, FedEx is heading, if I click on the plane and I can not track it, it's heading to Memphis. And then all the UPS ones are heading somewhere in Tennessee, I believe. If I remember correctly, but yeah, it's it's very interesting to watch all the planes. So, anyways, gotten a lot of questions. How well that works? I will tell you the little dongle it comes with an antenna that is not so great. So um, that's why the ADSB and it's cheap to make. I mean, it was probably under ten bucks worth of, of stuff to make it, and it was kind of fun to to make. So if you're interested in watching airplanes, and we'll get more and more airplanes all the time. And this was actually the way I did, I've been doing this particular one that you just watched is I'm running Dump 1090 on a Raspberry Pi, and it's out in my shed. So I have a Wi-Fi link to the shed now. And uh, this is running on a PC, and it's called ADSB Sharp. No, uh, I can't remember what it's called now. But this basically is another program running with PC that uses the Raspberry Pi as the feed. So you can use that same Raspberry Pi to also send to other places that do plane tracking. Um, and you can get free accounts on those plane tracking sites if you like like to, uh, to watch planes and stuff like that. It's a very interesting. It's very fun, actually. Um, and it runs all the time. I'll, I'll check on it a couple times a day. And sometimes I'll just bring it up and just watch it just because it's, it's fun to watch. Um, uh, I was, uh, I've gotten a lot of questions about the ADS-B and the antenna. Um, there's other ones. Other the cars is another one. I haven't done that yet. Um, but I'm probably going to do that very soon. And there's also one for AIS, which is for boats. So if you live close to the shore, you can see where ships are as well. So, um, and I'll put links to the software and everything I was using for this um, out in the show notes for the show. So I appreciate everybody kind of hanging in there. I know it's a little bit rough doing this in a hotel room. I don't have all the nice controls to jump back and forth real quick and things like that. But uh, I appreciate you all hanging in there. And uh, next Monday, we should be back in the studio, and I believe Bob's with us next Monday as well, because um, I get back uh, on Sunday. So I will see you all next Monday. For show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the TexN.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the TexN.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.